This asteroid is heading straight for Earth. If it hits, life as we know it is over. The last time a truly massive asteroid struck Earth, it erased nearly 75% of all life, including the dinosaurs. Space is full of these ancient objects and some have already passed closer to us than our own satellites. One asteroid in 2029 will come so close that some people on the ground will be able to see it with the naked eye. So the question is, if one of these giant space rocks hurtling towards Earth at tens of thousands of kilometers per hour, could we stop it? To understand our chances, we first need to understand what an asteroid actually is. How many of them are near our planet? Which ones pose the biggest threat right now? And finally, is the technology we've built strong enough to push a mountain-sized asteroid out of the way before it hits Earth? Asteroids are debris from the early days of our solar system about 4.6 billion years ago. They are made from rock and metal chunks left behind when planets formed. Currently, we know of roughly 1 million of them. Most of these orbit quietly between Mars and Jupiter in what's known as the asteroid belt. One of the largest asteroids that we know, Vesta, has a diameter of 329 miles, which is 530 kilometers. The only bigger one is Ceres, which is so large it's actually classed as a dwarf planet. On the other hand, some of the smallest asteroids are as little as 10 meters or 33 feet across. Interestingly, the total mass of all of the known asteroids combined is less than that of our moon. Every so often, one of these asteroids is nudged, whether that's by gravity or a collision, and they begin to drift inwards. If its new orbit brings it close to Earth, then suddenly we care. So how big would an asteroid need to be to cause major damage on Earth? These numbers come from an asteroid impact calculator, a scientific model exploring worst case scenarios. I've used the centre of London as the impact zone for each scenario, so don't take these numbers as a fact, but they do help to give some context. Let's start with a small asteroid, say 20 metres across, similar to a tennis court, and travelling at 20 kilometres per second. For this size, it would likely blow up 16 kilometres above ground. In 2013, an asteroid fragment measuring 18 metres wide entered Earth's atmosphere over Russia, and it did pretty much what the simulator said it would. It didn't hit the ground, but it exploded 30 kilometres in the air. Despite that, the shockwave still injured over 1,000 people, mostly from shattered glass. In total, 7,200 buildings were damaged and the repairs totaled $33 million. A medium-sized asteroid, say 200 meters across, traveling at 40 kilometers per second, would be a city killer. If one hit London directly, it would instantly vaporize nearly 300,000 people and a crater 6.5 kilometers wide would form. Six million people would die from the fireball, nearly a further three million from the shockwave and 2.5 million from the wind blast. The destruction and loss of life would be huge. And finally, a large asteroid, one kilometre wide, travelling at 60 kilometres per second. 5.2 million people would be instantly vaporised. A 34 kilometre wide crater would consume London. 34 million people would be consumed by the fireball. 7 million people would die from the shockwave. And homes 600 kilometres away would collapse. Nearly 17 million people would die from the wind blast. The resulting earthquake would have a widespread impact across multiple countries, as you can see here. Pure devastation. Just quickly, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. So that was an asteroid with a diameter of one kilometer, but the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs 66 million years ago was estimated to be 10 to 15 kilometers in diameter. So now the question is, how many asteroids are near Earth? Astronomers call anything that comes into Earth's orbital neighborhood a near-Earth object, or NEO. That means its orbit around the Sun brings it into a perihelion distance of 1.3 astronomical units or less. But in English terms, that means its orbit is in our vicinity. 
Among these, the worst ones are labelled as Potentially Hazardous Asteroid, or PHAs. Scientists have already catalogued over 90% of the kilometre-wide objects, the biggest civilization threatening asteroids. But the issue is, as I mentioned earlier, the medium-sized ones, around 150 to 300 metres in diameter, are far harder to spot. Enough of them remain undetected that we can't assume that the skies are safe. When keeping up to date with the most important updates about space, I use Ground News. Their interest page that you can see here collects all relevant articles in one place. That's where I found this. A global research effort published in July 2025 uncovered a previously unrecognised group of asteroids in Venus's orbital path. These are the city killer asteroids that remain undetected that we need to be concerned about. This article recently broke about how the dinosaurs were thriving before the mass extinction asteroid hit. It's collected 121 articles, shows me which sway left, centre or right, the ownership and the factuality rating. Ground News's Vantage Plan gives you access to all of its amazing features like media bias ratings and factuality scores. For example, this article from the Daily Mirror, which is a tabloid in the UK, has mixed factuality, which you can tell from their sensationalised headline. Whereas this source has a very high factuality rating and it sits centrally on the political spectrum so there is no political leaning in the way that they report information. You can see the dramatisation of crash into Earth versus threaten Earth. Trust me, once you use ground news to cut through the chaotic media landscape, you won't go back. If you click the link in the description or go to groundnews.com slash everything or even scan this QR code, you'll get 40% off your Ground News Vantage plan, giving you unlimited access to all of its amazing features. So the biggest question that you must have right now, of all the asteroids that we know, which ones pose the biggest threat to Earth? This is Apophis. It was first discovered in early 2004, and it was initially flagged with a worryingly high impact probability of 2.7% either in 2029, 2036 or 2068. It's elongated with its mean diameter being 340 metres and its longest axis measuring 450 metres. An impact would be catastrophic for millions of people. Since then, astronomers have closely watched Apophis using orbital telescopes and ground-based radar, allowing its orbit to become better understood. Based on this data, NASA is now confident that there is no risk of Apophis impacting Earth for at least 100 years, but it will safely pass by around 20,000 miles or 32,000 kilometers above the surface on April the 13th, 2029. Even though Apophis doesn't pose an immediate threat to Earth, an asteroid of that size passing so close to our planet is a very rare event. Scientists all around the world are excited to study Apophis as it passes by, and it may even be visible with the naked eye from certain places on Earth. However, the asteroid at the top of NASA's watch list is Bennu, which has a diameter of 490 meters. It was discovered in September 1999 and was officially designated the name 101955 Bennu 1999 RQ36. Thankfully, it's now just referred to as Bennu. It currently poses the greatest risk of impact on our planet, but fortunately, not for some time. And when I say greatest risk, scientists have calculated that when it makes a close approach to Earth on September the 24th, 2182, there is a 0.037% chance of impact, which is 1 in 2700. Scientists are learning as much as they can about this carbon-rich asteroid, which is believed to have broken away from a larger asteroid between 700 million years ago to 2 billion years ago. On September the 24th, 2023, NASA's OSIRIS-REx spacecraft returned a sample of Bennu to Earth, and the space rock has been analysed by teams of researchers across the globe. This spacecraft is now on a new mission to study Apophis after 2029. Early results suggest that Bennu contains the building blocks of life, including the simple amino acid glycine, as well as many water-bearing minerals. 
This suggests Bennu's parent body witnessed many water-related episodes before eventually fracturing. If Bennu did impact Earth, especially in a densely populated area, millions of people would die, but it wouldn't cause a global extinction level event like the Chitz Club impactor did 66 million years ago. That asteroid left a crater 200 kilometers wide. Despite these asteroids not posing a massive threat right now, their orbits can change, which is why monitoring them constantly is key. All night, every night, sky surveys scan for NEOs. Their measurements feed into automated systems that constantly recompute risks. As new data comes in, most risks vanish, but the orbit gets pinned down. So the question is, if an asteroid is heading towards Earth, do we have the technology to stop one? The simple answer is yes, if we have time. If we have 10 or more years, then there's a good chance. If it's one to five years, it becomes more difficult. And if it's just months or less, then it's basically impossible. Stopping an asteroid is not about blowing it up at the last second. It's about spotting it early, then giving it tiny nudges so it misses Earth completely. A 1% change in its path years in advance is enough to see it fly by harmlessly. The first option would be to use a kinetic impactor. In 2022, NASA's DART mission succeeded in shifting an asteroid's orbit. DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. It slammed into Dimorphos, an asteroid with a diameter of 177 meters, and changed its orbital period by around 33 minutes, which is way beyond the minimum success criteria. HERA is a planetary defense mission on the way to Dimorphos to map the crater and changes made by the DART mission, turning its success into a repeatable playbook. It's expected to arrive in 2026. This method's not perfect, as there is a chance it may just deform the asteroid, rather than kick it out of orbit, and if the asteroid is much, much bigger, it has a reduced impact. A much slower and more precise method is a gravity tractor first proposed in 2005. Essentially, you park a heavy spacecraft near the asteroid and let mutual gravity tug the rock gently over years. This method is very precise and a good option, but requires years in advance and steady operations. What about a last resort? A planetary ending asteroid is hurtling towards Earth and we don't have time for a kinetic impactor or a gravity tractor. Well, we have the controversial nuclear option. A spacecraft would detonate a nuclear device near it. The resulting explosion releases an intense burst of energy which would push the asteroid sideways. The goal isn't to destroy the asteroid, it's to give it the biggest push possible. It's the most powerful tool we currently have, but it's far from perfect. For starters, there's a risk it breaks the asteroid apart, creating multiple, slightly smaller objects hurtling towards Earth. Politically speaking, putting nuclear weapons onto a rocket and launching it into space is a sensitive situation which could only be fast-tracked in a planet-ending situation. And even then, so much precision is required to make sure the explosion does what we want it to. So all the options that we have available try and do the same thing. We don't want to destroy the asteroid, we just want to push its orbit away from Earth. We aren't totally helpless, but we can't afford to take our eyes away from the skies, as we can never fully predict what will change in the vast expanse of space.